Hello, my name is Mike Avery from Kent's Design Systems. In this video, I'm going to talk about empty sequences, how you can calculate delays between elements of a sequence which contains an empty sequence, and a scenario where it may not behave as you anticipate intuitively. Here's an example of a property. On the right-hand side here, we can see we have this term here, a star 0 to 3. That term is just a shorthand for having to write out this. So that's for the term where 0 occurrences of A required. This OR is a sequence composition operator, so it allows an OR of all these sequences. So clearly this will be painful if I had to type all this out, especially if that upper bound was infinity instead of 3. So all of these things highlighted here are equivalent to the single term A star 0 to 3. This represents an empty sequence. We're seeing here that 0 occurrence of A are permitted, i.e. it doesn't need to occur at all. So we might query what happens then if we remove this term, because we can't have a delay between B and something that's not required to occur, or between something that isn't required to occur and C. So what happens to these delays either side of it? So it's not the case that just one disappears. What you have to do in order to find out what happens is go to the language reference manual. And the version of the language reference manual I'm looking at is the 2017 version. So that's the latest version at the time of making this video. And here, 16.9.2.1. It tells me about how these behave, these empty sequences. And it gives me this LRM example, which is similar to the one I've just described here. However, it's a bit inconvenient for us in terms of defining what happens in every circumstance that they've used hash hash one here instead. So we'll see other examples later on. So there are rules about how empty sequences behave. So what it's saying here is if I have empty hash hash n seek, then this is equivalent to hash hash n minus one seek. So let's apply that reasoning to our property that we have. So in this expansion of the A star 0 to 3 here, the only term that will be affected by empty sequences is this first one here that I'm highlighting now. So let's look at the rule. It says that's equivalent to hash hash n minus 1 seek. So we have empty there, that's the empty term. The sequence is here. So that's equivalent to hash hash n minus 1, so 2 minus 1 is 1. And I can abbreviate that further to this. So that's how my sequence will behave. So what I have here is a property that's equivalent to, i just change this now to zero, that property there is equivalent to this one here, because I've said star zero. So that's how we work out what the delay is. So it's not convenient having these numbers one, because you might get the impression that one of these terms disappears, if that had said that, for example you might be thinking that one of these actually disappears. That's not the case. It's actually a subtraction of one of the delays. We can see this if we look at a different example now. So in this case, neither of the delays either side of the potentially empty sequence is 1. So it's a bit easy to understand. So let's do the same thing, expand this out, what this means. As before, the only term affected is this one here, because it contains the empty sequence S star 0. And the rest of these terms will remain unchanged. So as we've seen before, what we do here is when we have, let's go back to the LRM again. So as we can see here, if we have empty hash hash n sequence, then this is equivalent to hash hash n minus 1 sequence. So that's our empty term. That's our sequence. So remove the empty term. Subtract one from there. We can therefore abbreviate that to hash hash 8 and that becomes our new property. You see there's another rule here which says if we have sequence hash hash n empty then that's equivalent to sequence hash hash n minus 1 true. So what we can do here is, is if we look at the other term instead. So sequence empty is r hash hash 3 empty. So what we need to do is say leave the sequence r there take one off this one instead, making it two. That sequence disappears because it's true. And my delay now becomes the same thing. So whichever rule I apply, I end up with the same answer, which is that. So you may be wondering to yourself, how do I know that I've calculated the delay correctly if I have an empty term? Well, we can use Jasper to do this. So what we can do is test properties back to back. And in order to do that, all we need to do is have a module with just inputs and that's all. So there's nothing else inside this module at all. No combination of statements, no always blocks, nothing. 
And what we do is we've got a default clock. We have an assumption here saying assume that S is always zero because I've got this property here with these delays in because I'm only interested in the term where S is zero, not the others. So I say assume S is always zero. So the only thing I'll ever match is S star zero. I write the other property which I think is equivalent to the term with star S zero that we calculated previously as this. I assume that property and I assert this one. So let's think what we're doing here. We're driving the wires in any way allowed by the assumptions in order to violate this assertion. And if the assertion cannot be violated, this means the assumptions and the assertion are equivalent. A quick way of remembering how to calculate these delays, rather than remember which one of the two rules to apply, or which one of the two you should apply, is it works out the same. So basically you just take the empty term, delete it, and then you subtract one from either of these numbers. So just add the two together and then subtract one. Then you'll end up with the correct delay for the term which has star zero. Another aspect of empty sequences that often catches people out is this as well. So this assertion is failing. I click the right button and say view source. Let's have a look at it. The intent of this is to say if I have a start of packet, then from the next cycle, I have not start of packet for zero to an infinite number of cycles, hash hash zero, end of packet. And I put dollar past here because what's allowable in this protocol is if I have an SOP and EOP on the same cycle, that's deemed as one null transaction. So that's why I'm using dollar past here. So the hash hash zero means zero delay. So that would appear on the face of it to do the trick. However, it fails. So let's investigate the reason for it failing. So here's my SOP occurring in EOP. So I have SOP on this cycle. Notice the highlighting in Jasper. The blue tells you the antecedent is satisfied and the red tells you that's the reason for the failure. So from this, it's telling me that the reason for that failure is that SOP is high here and I might wonder why. Because I've said already that SOP and EOP are allowed to be high in the same cycle, indicating a null transaction. So why does this back-to-back -back null transactions cause me an error? Well, in order to find out this, we need to go back to the LRM again, because it's not immediately obvious. So another one of these rules was, if you have sequence hash hash zero empty, that does not result in a match. So if we go back to our property here, what we're saying is if, for this term, imagine if we expand this out like we did the previous ones, for the term star zero for not SOP out, I've got hash hash zero and then another sequence. The LRM says that does not result in a match, so it's like it doesn't exist at all. That match does not exist. Therefore, what I've described is the same exactly as saying this, because effectively the term star zero doesn't exist. Okay, now it should be clear to me why that assertion is failing. What I'm saying is if I have SOP out, on the next cycle I must have not SOP out, which is the reason this is showing a failure here. So this is not a bug in Jasper, this is that little clause in the LRM tells us that we can't put zero there. It's not a syntax error by the way, we can put zero there, so there's nothing preventing us doing that in a syntax point of view. It will still compile, although the effect we get is exactly the same as this, because we cannot match hash hash zero with an empty sequence, and an empty sequence being the one term in that, when expanded, that has a zero in it. To summarise then, when we're calculating the delays in sequences which contain potentially empty sequences, i.e. it has a star zero term, then in order to calculate the delays, just add the delays either side of it and then subtract one and you'll end up with the right thing. When using hash hash zero to indicate a fusion of two sequences, be aware that if one of the terms is empty, i.e. has star zero in it, then that never will result in a match. So you're saying the same thing as saying one dollar in this example. That concludes this training bite. Thanks for listening and goodbye.